let's talk about the 49ers Woof. week 10 game against another NFC West opponent and the LA Rams yeah on a Monday night this is going to be very very long and painful and downright ugly for the red and gold are you ready for a Monday night are you ready dun 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 dun, dun. you know like Smackdown are you ready for a massacre dun 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 are you ready dun, 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 dun. are you ready for the Rams to whoop on that candy red and gold ass you know, thankfully, thankfully, um, I have work during uh, this Niners game on Monday. Um, so I don't get home till at least the second half. So if the Niners are getting their ass whooped, um, I, I'm, I'm probably uh, uh, certain that I didn't miss much. Um, but, you know, like I said, anything can happen in the NFL. I mean, we've seen crazier things in week nine already and we've already certainly seen a crazy result with um the dolphins uh pretty much shutting down lamar jackson on thursday night so again we anything can happen but uh i'm not getting my hopes up with uh, this game and that is because uh, the la rams are coming into this game all pissed off as hell <laughs> yeah so let's talk about it let's talk about this uh upcoming game between the la rams and the 49ers in week 10 so the LA Rams are heading into this uh, Monday night matchup, this uh, big uh, critical matchup for both teams. Um, let's start off with the LA Rams. The LA Rams, you know, they're seven and two, um, heading into this uh, NFC West matchup. They're coming off a kind of a big loss to the Tennessee Titans that saw Matthew Stafford get harassed all night long against a Tennessee defense that you know performed surprisingly well. Um, they picked off Matthew Stafford twice, including a pick six, and uh, the defense. The Rams defense didn't get to Ryan Tannehill that much, um, aside from um, a sack and an interception, and that was it. So, other than that, they're like both sides were pretty quiet all night long. I mean, Cooper Cup um, on the offensive side, um, you know, he still had that um, one-to-one connection with Matthew Stafford, but other than that, it was pretty like quiet. It was pre- pretty quiet on all fronts, and the Rams were just held to um, nine points from Matt Gay. That was all their production came from um, against a suddenly, like a suddenly God uh, Titans defense on Sunday night. But despite that loss, um, they still have a very talent, a very talented team, you know, that can't be understated. I mean, sure. They lost to the Cardinals like big in week four, but you know, they, they haven't lost two consecutive and you know, that could change. That could change. But this group is very talented, and it's clear that they're going all in to host that Super Bowl in their home stadium in L.A., that fancy SoFi. Um, Matthew Stafford's a very good quarterback, um, and he's very much like, I guess he was kind of that, that missing piece um, that the Rams needed on offense that Jared Goff just wasn't providing. Um, again, like we saw on Sunday night, um, you know, there just some um, emotional attachment um in Matthew Stafford that he brought over from the Lions so (laughs) I guess that's something to expose for the 49ers I guess um but this offense nonetheless has really helped um Cooper Cup you know he's starting to like he I mean he was already a a good wide receiver but he's become a really good wide receiver you know he's like he's really separated himself from the defense he no he runs his routes really well and he can catch the long bomb from Matt Stafford. So he's pretty damn good. And then the supporting cast of Daryl Henderson, Robert Woods, Van Jefferson, and now fucking Odell Beckham Jr. Like he just signed over there after game released from the Browns. Like, my goodness. My goodness. And then the offensive line, um, aside from Sunday night, has played pretty well. They protected uh, Matt Stafford, you know, fairly fairly well but that offense is very dangerous it is so so damn dangerous uh the defense is a also a strong suit for the rams as well um the secondary it, it can still use a little tightening up outside of J- jalen ramsey um but that front seven um it is like tough as shit is like they got a good they got a strong run defense um and then they 
they can get to the quarterback um, pretty pretty well. Um, Aaron Donald's having another good year, and then they just added well Von Miller of the De- uh, from the Denver Broncos. So they got a Super Bowl MVP um, to come, and they got via a trade. So clearly, they're going all in. So all in all, both sides have been doing their roles pretty well, and has led to a balanced attack for the LA Rams. As for the 49ers, <laughs> oh man. We've discussed this so much, but I'm just gonna condense it down here. They have lost. They have lost four of their last five games, um, including this past week's even more embarrassing shitter to the G League practice squad Arizona Cardinals at home. That didn't have Kyler Murray. That didn't have DeAndre Hopkins. That didn't have AJ Green. That didn't have Chase Edmonds uh, on the very first snap for the Cardinals. Ah, uh, like. Can this get even more embarrassing for a Niners team that has so much talent um, on the roster? So the 49ers and their their fans, like we, they can't use injuries. Like they can't really they can't use injuries. We only had a, a few major injuries this year. Raheem Mostert, Jason Verrett, like those are the those were the only two. Oh, um, Javon Kinlaw. Those are the only three major injuries this year. Like, what? Where's the injury card now? Like, the secondary sucks so bad and that they've been committing, like, pass interference, like, on a regular basis, and they can't they can't cover for shit. Uh, Jimmy Garbage fail, aside from this week, I mean, he protected the ball fairly well. He, he generally throws the passes so damn high that the ankles of his receivers, you know, they get hurt. And he, he can't get up, he can't move out of the pocket most of the time, and He's just a general, generally a not so great quarterback. So all in all, this is a total team effort of all season mediocrity and disappointment that makes kind of like makes the the Bears like kind of, kind of decent. <laughs> this is because of all the things I mentioned. So we're kind of like becoming the West Coast style of Bears football. So they head into this key matchup with the Rams. You know, clearly still trotting out that very bad secondary that consists of, well, two washed ass players in Dre Kirkpatrick and Josh Norman. And, you know, pl- players that we've been having that are just not living up to expectations. Um, and obviously, they'll have to rely on Jimmy Garbage Fail to, in a game that they're probably going to have to throw pretty much nearly all game long because, well, the Rams are going to be pissed as shit and they're going to be like, taking advantage of that secondary by throwing it to Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and if he plays, Beckham. Yeah. So, keys to victory for the Rams. Uh, that offensive line needs to protect uh, Matt Stafford from Nick Boza. I mean, Boza, at this point, is the only thing generating a pass rush. So, I think this offensive line should have no problem uh, protecting Matthew Stafford. I mean, the, the O-line for the Rams has been pretty strong. Um, this season um, and then like I said before the Rams have to attack the uh, through the air because um, the Niners run defense even with um, a not so um, a so-so um, run defense you know they can they're, they're still pretty exposable um, through the air so Cooper Cup Van Jefferson uh, Robert Woods Tyler Higby like uh, Matthew Stafford had no problem like Spreading the ball around to just about everybody in this game, and then on the de- on the defensive side, um, you get like you gotta j- if you gotta blitz Jimmy Garbage fail, like he, he is not moving around that pocket, um, and if he does, it's not that far. It is really not that far, um, and Von Miller is expected to play in this game, so the Rams are gonna have a field day with this one, and if the 49ers w- want to have a chance at upsetting. The Rams in whatever way and preventing a massacre um, on Monday night and in, a, in an absolute prime time like they want to prevent an absolute prime time national televised embarrassment not in just from their home fans um, live in person but also around the world. Um, Kyle Shanahan can't micromanage Jimmy G in that offense with middle run plays, check downs, none of that like small time bullshit. That Rams defense is too strong and they're too smart for that. Um, 
and then they know that's going to be so predictable that they can like shut that down real quick and they can even pick off Jimmy G. Um, Shanahan has to get aggressive. They got to let Jimmy G throw it deep downfield. They got to let him take more chances. Um, they got to get more people involved other than just the, their big three and hasty, uh, not, not hasty, which he should be getting more involved in anyway. Um, their big three in Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle, as well as uh, Elijah Mitchell. So they, they have to get aggressive and they gotta, you know, try some things to throw off the Rams because you gotta. This is like the 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 season, the season on the line game. This is <laughs> this is the game, like that could make or break the Niners season. Like I pretty much said it, it like a couple times, like. Um, that this this is their game to like continue their season, but this is pretty much the one. If they lose this one, it's over. It is over. They're they are done. They they should not be thinking playoffs any longer. And I know they, they should not be thinking. They shouldn't have been thinking playoffs as soon as they, they lost to the Colts. But like, if they lose this game, they really shouldn't be thinking about playoffs. And uh, I guess going forward, um, with this keys to victory, uh, the offensive line has to protect Jimmy G. At all costs, because um, yeah, that uh, front four is gonna go hard. They're gonna be pressuring him. Uh, they're gonna be like, go. They're gonna be going to attack um, a, a pretty pretty uh, beat up uh, line that I don't think even Trent Williams can like protect because that right side of the line, uh, the offensive line is pretty weak. Um, and the secondary, like, like they they just. They they gotta find they gotta wake up. They have to find a way to, you know, show up when it matters most. I mean, I think Jimmy Ward, their safety, their their top safety, the front safety, is coming back, um, to play this game. But I don't I don't really think it'll make a difference. I really don't. I mean, is he really gonna do all that much to help out? Is he really? So, their defensive coordinator, Domingo Ryan's. They have to. Get, they have to do something. They have. They have to do whatever it takes. They have to do. They have to. He has to make a game plan for his defense to do better. To do. To do better in a must-win game. In, in a game that I personally don't think the Niners will win, but for whatever reason, some people will. But all in all, uh, yeah, the Niners are probably not gonna win in what will probably be a massacre by the Rams. A very pissed off Rams team on Monday night. And um, once they lose this game, like I mentioned time and time again, it, it's time to start the rookies in Jacksonville. It's time to start Trey Lance and all those guys in Jacksonville. And it's rookies all the way in for the rest of the season. But that is my preview of... Uh, that is my preview of the... Uh, Upcoming game against the LA Rams on Monday night. I really hate the NFL for uh, putting this game in prime time, um, especially now considering where the Niners stand. But let me know how you feel about uh, this Monday night game against the Rams. And I know I'm pretty pessimistic as all hell um, going to this game, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And again, luckily, luckily I'm working in the first half of this game, so at least I don't get to see the massacre that's about to unfold. <laughs>